Hi everybody, this is Dave Moorhead here with a Lightroom tip on how to export your photos into Photomatix, which is an HDR program, and then bring it back into Lightroom and then edit it and then export it. So you have to have Lightroom and you also have to have Photomatix for this to work, okay? So you have to have both of those programs installed. Today I was going out to take some sunset pictures and I took a few and I was like, well, you know what, uh, the dynamic range is a little bit too much for a one shot. So I decided to shoot some bracketing so I could have different exposures to work with an HDR program. So what I did was I set the camera on bracketing mode and then I had it set for five photos. And then it would take this one, which was two stops under regular exposure, one stop under. This is the normal exposure, one stop over, two stops over. For HDR, all you need is the two under, and then you need the regular exposure and the two over exposure for it to work. So I selected those by clicking control and then clicking on each of the photos. Okay, if you push shift, it's going to include all the photos in between. That's not what you want. So you have to push control and then click on the photos and it will choose them individually. All right, so right click on one of the photos and then export to Photomatix Pro. And it will, since this is a handheld uh, um, series of shots, I'm just gonna have it align images to make sure in case I move just a little bit, it will align that and get rid of any of that. So this is for handheld. Um, reduce noise, sure, why not? Uh, it's not gonna have a lot of noise because I use a very low ISO of 125. And re remove any chromatic aberrations. Just leave the uh, defaults here for now and then click export. And then what it's going to do is it's going to open up Photomatix. And then you're going to see uh, all the photos combined. And then you can choose some presets and play with the sliders until you get what you want. So the trick to this kind of uh, shooting is also that you have to use manual focus because you do not want the camera to change focus on any one of the five shots. So once you get your focus set, uh, like I focused on the tree to make sure the tree was in focus because I wanted that to be crisp. And then I just clicked over to manual focus and then I took the series of five shots. All right, you can hear my older computer chugging away with the fan going nuts because uh, I guess it's a little intensive. All right, so it gives you this and it kind of just guesses at like uh, what the best uh, use for th this subject and it actually came up with what I would choose too, Paint Relay 2. And there's different options you can choose. You can choose all these different uh, styles here, but I'm just going to go ahead and choose the one that it came up with by default and we can work with that. Okay, so if you really wanted to, you could ex you could do some uh, moving of sliders in, over in here, but I think it's okay for now. And we're just going to save and re-import back into Lightroom by pushing this button here. All right, so that's going to bring us back into Lightroom. And so we got to go back here, open up Lightroom, and it's going to plop this HDR photo, a TIFF, right in the middle of all my five exposures. So I'll just click on there, and that's photo brought into Lightroom. All right, so we can make some modifications now to this in Lightroom and then export it. So you got to keep an eye on uh, the if the highlights are blown out or if it's too dark. So this, if you hover your uh, mouse over these triangles, that'll let you know, like if, if I had any like parts of the photo that were pure black and no definition, then they would turn like a dark black over here. And this lets you know down here, see the red flashing? That's a blown out highlight. So if you want to bring that back a little bit, you just go to highlights and you just crank that a little bit until the triangle uh, is not illuminated. Okay, so I'm going to add a little clarity, which is mid-tone contrast. I'm going to add a little vibrance, which adds a little bit more color not too crazy. Don't touch the saturation because then it starts to look uh, phony and surreal unless that's the effect you're going for of course. Then I'm going to go under detail 
and I'm going to go to sharpening and I kind of stay just before the red zone here uh, that's when you get get into like some noise areas but you can avoid some of this noise by doing this going up as high on the sharpening and then adjusting the masking what the masking does is that the, when you go to the right it uh, only sharpens the edges and it leaves the rest of the photo alone so you don't add as much noise to your photo like this area here will have less noise you see this blue area so you hold down the alt key and then click on masking and then you'll see what it's actually going to sharpen okay so if you just go like right about there then see you've got a little bit less noise like see what happens when I move the masking over and it sharpens the whole photo I get that noise in that blue area and I don't need that so I think it's better just to do the edges and get rid of a little bit of that noise and if you need to just use a very minute a bit of noise reduction if you use too much noise reduction it softens the photo so and I don't like that so I just use a very minute amount and that looks pretty good to me and you can scroll around the photo to have a look but that blue area is a good indication of you know if it's going to be noisy or not all right so let's go F for full screen and look at that that looks pretty good we've got some color and I see some detail in the darker areas I like it I think I'm gonna go with that okay so once you're happy with the photo you go back to the library mode and then you export and then you have this dialog box that comes up I want to save to let's say the desktop so choose desktop okay and then choose what you want to name it I named this one HDR photo and you can make sure the setting is set to a hundred percent that gives you the absolute best JPEG quality and if you wanted to resize for like the web or something like that you can resize easily here and then just choose how many megapixels you want it to be and what resolution but I want this to be full resolution because I might print this and use this for like one of my photo books and since I'm just going to be printed and not just for web use I would choose either matte or glossy paper and then just choose standard and then you could optionally put a watermark on there but I don't want to because when I put it on my photo website it doesn't allow you to copy the photo so there's no need for a watermark if you're going to put it on Facebook or any other social media and you don't want someone to steal your photo and at least you want to get credit for it you can create a watermark and then just click there and it'll put it wherever you want on the photo okay so let's export to the desktop and then I'm going to override because I, I exported earlier the same file name so that's why it asked me that so now let's go here and have a look at the photo there it is on my desktop and there's our photo now you can upload that to your photo website or wherever you are going to have it printed like uh, Shutterfly anything like that and that's a high resolution photo uh, because I saved it on the high settings and you can check to see what the uh, what the properties are here it's a 21 uh, you know, and a half megabyte photo so that's a pretty pretty good detailed photo okay so that is how you export a photo from Lightroom to Photomatics and then how you get it back into Lightroom and you edit it and then you get it ready for printing if you found this video helpful please feel free to like and subscribe thanks